I have some new innovations over in the apiary I want to show you, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farms Apiary. I'm your host Jerry Hansen and I want to thank you for joining me on my adventures. In this episode I'm going to be showing you guys a new innovation or actually there's two new innovations that I employed here at the apiary. One of my innovations is I turned this hive into a duplex. That's right, a honeybee duplex. Let me show you. What I did with this hive is I essentially turned it into a duplex. This is a 10 frame deep and I split it and made it two five frames. So if you notice I have an entrance reducer here and my entrance reducer has two entrances right here and here because I've got a divider down the middle. Now I'll pop the lid and I'll show you what I've done upstairs. I have to modify the uh, top yet um, because only one half can uh, access this. Now I got the brick in here to put weight on this inner cover to press it down on the top of this inner board that I have as a divider. And I'll show you what, this is just a quick jerry rig. Here's the inner cover and what I did is I, I sawed a slit in here and I was a little bit off so I had to saw another one but that's okay they got a ventilation hole there. And then I said, this is the center, and so I saw, uh, saw it another slit there, and two top entrances there, one for each side. Now here is my divider. This is just a thin sheet of plywood that's cut, and I have some ears cut on it, and this extends uh, above the top. Now you notice this extends above the top of this uh, deep. The reason being, when I put this inner cover on, it sits evenly to the board because this is, this has a little bit of an indentation to it so the board goes all the way up to the top which prevents the bees from coming up from one side to the other up over the top. This also extends all the way down to the bottom just inside of my uh, you see the plywood extending right down to here, so it'll extend all the way down to the bottom screen to prevent bees from accessing one side to the other. This is simply how I made my uh, hive reducer, is I put a slit right in the middle to accommodate when it slides in, it accommodates that um, sheet of plywood, because this is actually deeper than the hive box itself, the wood material that the hive box is in. So we just slide that right in, and that plywood will fit right down in the groove, and then we've got a complete duplex for the bees, uh, where they won't be uh, going from one side to the other. And there's the middle of the divider, and you got five frames on this side, five frames on that side. So I took one full deep and modified it slightly. That way I can take that divider out and there's no modifications to the deep at all. I can actually turn it into one big hive. So let's put this back together. And this would be, uh, in this configuration, this is what you would most likely use for swarms or a uh, nuke. Like if you buy nukes, this is what you can put in for your nukes. And this is a pollen patty I'm feeding the bees. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it out over here for those other bees to eat because the pollen patty will help them uh, draw out more comb. And so this is set up except for the feeder. Speaking of feeder, I want to show you a modification I made for a front feeder that I have for a hive. This is a front feeder. All it is is just 
one of these little uh, critters that you can buy uh, through your bee source stores. Uh, and they're not that much, but you can just fit a standard mason jar, and this is a ball jar and lid, and you put the little tiny holes in there with a little tiny nail. So my pet peeve about this design here was, uh, let's get this inner cup, this hive reducer out, and I'll show you what's going on. This is designed to go slip in here, but to get it to hold in there, you have to lift it up and pull it in. Then it creates a big gap here between your uh, stand, uh, your bottom board, and your frame, or your deeps, and I didn't like that. So what I did is I took and made a regular hive reducer that fits exactly to the, the depth of this hole. And then I cut this groove right here to fit exactly the depth of this part right here. So it slides right in, it stays flush, and it's held in place by enough compression. And uh, I don't have to remove it or anything, just remove the jar and feed it. So we just slide that right in like that. And this just slides right in there and it's held nice and tight in place. You fill your jar with water and sugar and you just pop it in there and the bees are fed and they still have their little access hole to get in and out. Now you can build a couple of these and build different sizes of entrance holes for your bees. You typically want your entrance holes gauged to the size of your colony because uh, the bigger the colony, the more guard bees they're going to have, so they'll be able to defend the hive a lot better. Well, the smaller the colony, the smaller your hole should be, uh, because they, they're not very big, they're not very strong, and they only have a few guard bees, so they're able to defend themselves a little bit better. So I hope you enjoyed this video adventure in my hobby farm apiary here at Pine Meadows. And I hope that you will tune in for more videos as I uh, post them. I've got several videos still in production this week. So I hope to have a video a day this week. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen, here at Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. Please give me a thumbs up. Leave comments. I really enjoy your comments. And remember, I am a, be a beginner beekeeper. Uh, please subscribe. And always remember, you save the bees, you save the world. I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.